So, okay, hi Sean. Thank you so much for coming in. How are you? Yeah, good. I mean, uh, fresh off the breakfast show. Fresh so off the breakfast show. Still a bit delirious. Yeah, I was sitting in there. It was great. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you for coming in and taking your time out. So I'm. You already know this, but I'm in Year Twelve at yeah. Global Academy. Got my FMP coming up. I'm doing a show reel um, for my radio show, and also doing a documentary, like a behind the scenes style documentary, showing the process of creating a show reel sort of thing. Oh, nice. And so I thought, what better person? to have with me than the Queen of Capital Breakfast, oh. Sean Welby. Well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, so no pressure, but if I do no this pressure. wrong, you fail your exam. Um, well, mm, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, basically. Be, uh, give me my best performance. Go Thank on. Thank you so Hit much. Me. Okay, so first question, how did you get into radio and was there a certain moment that you realised you loved it, it was for you? I think I've always wanted to get in radio. I've come a very weird route in my career and everyone mm. has their own different route and there's no right or wrong. So whether you're doing, um, you know, Global Academy yeah. or you did it at uni or hospital radio or student radio or maybe like me, honestly, I've come out of nowhere. I've come I, out I, of did look you, I did look, look you up on Wikipedia. Yeah. From New Look. From New Look. So I was New working look. part-time <laughs> in the shop. So I wanted to do acting originally. So I knew I wanted to do entertainment of some sort. Always liked radio and things like that. Had yeah. no clue how to get into that. So I started my journey. It? Well, I started by doing presenting stuff. So I was mm. like doing online videos and I was... You talk about showreel as well. Fake it till you make it is one of my <laughs> best bits of advice because I wanted to do television and didn't have any sort of showreel. So what mm. I had to do was imagine the kind of thing I wanted to be on. So whether it was hosting live at Glastonbury, <laughs> I got a, I got a camera in a field, set up one lonely tent. Oh my god! Got my dad to chase me through the field like he was an angry <laughs> farmer and did a link as if I was live. So I, what? so I pretended it. I um, made it all up, and and I did, um, you know, as if I was hosting um, a music show because I liked hmm. music, and I and I put all these clips together of me doing things that I wanted to do, yeah. And then it worked in a way. It started um, because I got a showreel to put up. I then uh, started getting little jobs coming through. A lot of it was online videos. Then I did a lot of sports stuff. Then weather. We and then weather <laughs> came along, which is so random because I'm so bad at geography. Oh. So how I managed to get away with six years on Channel 5 weather. Well, you did it. You, yeah. you did it good. So, well done. Thank you. <laughs> well but done. That was kind of the route, I think, for me that got me in radio was off the back of those weather forecasts where I had a bit of fun mm. and I um, you know, put those puns in it. If you saw that, I did some like viral forecasts. Yeah. And because of that, radio stations around the world were like, do a forecast for us. The ones with the words that you like integrated in. Yes, exactly. Them ones were so funny. Like Harry Potter weather <laughs> and Star Wars weather. They're the ones that I got known for. I love for that. And, Thanks. So that was kind of weirdly, um, that was my gateway into radio because yeah. they were getting me on, radio shows were getting me on to do stuff. And then I did Capital Breakfast as a, like a gimmicky thing they got me on gave me challenges and then off the back of that two years before I'd done a demo for Heart and it was just oh. sitting on the file and this is something else to know that these things don't happen overnight that that demo I did for Heart was sitting there getting dust and I thought <laughs> I'd never it'd never see the light of day and then it's the timing of suddenly I was sort of I don't know. I was in the right place at the right time mm. where when somebody said, oh, who is this girl that's doing the weather forecast and doing all these funny things? Oh, we've got a demo, actually, she did two years ago. And then the stars align. Wow. The stars align. Yeah. They do. But was there, um, when you first started, was there a point where you were like, nah, this is going to take a bit more practice or did it all just come naturally, do you think? Oh, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Forget <laughs> telly, forget anything, like any video stuff. Radio is definitely a talent yeah like, it's hard and I remember literally having almost nervous breakdowns the thought of going live it, when your heart's racing and your you're heart's like oh, racing and, and afterwards you start sweating <laughs> sweating I mean I remember thinking how is it possible to do all these things at once in tv you'd have a full team counting you down mm. you'd have somebody playing the audio somebody um would be editing it together somebody would be scripting it and on radio you are all those characters you're timing By yourself. yourself aren't you yeah you're, Especially you're, when you're doing like a solo show and you're just like, oh. Yeah, and you're pressing. It's like learning to drive. You're trying to talk and drive at the same time. You're driving that desk. Yeah. That in itself is such a, a talent. And it took me ages to master it. I was terrible, honestly. <laughs> if you listen to some old heart shows, I was on 7 till 10, they'll be horrendous. And I also used to do a radio voice. I don't know where it came from. 
The one that's like, oh, yeah, like this. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Heart Radio, hey, how's it going this evening? And because <laughs> the second, for some reason, you put headphones on, there'll be, this is like an urge we'll all get, is to do a weird voice. Yeah. And you have to, like, untrain yourself. And just be natural. Yes. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. If you heard my show from back in, like, year 10 when I first started, you'll cringe. It, it was so bad. But, yeah, it, it does come a bit naturally after a while, though, doesn't it? Eventually, you chill out and you learn to just, Try be and be yourself. Yeah. yeah, and that's the other thing. Don't try and copy any other presenter or don't, don't do a genre of music or whatever if you're not into it mm. because you have to just be you, don't you? Like, you have to be as passionate and as normal. That's Otherwise, people advice. are like, what am I listening to? Yeah, literally. People will just turn it off. That's great advice. Thank you. And what is your favourite thing about presenting on Capital Breakfast or just in general? I think with Capital... Like, when I did Heart, I was doing evenings, I was on my own. Mm. And it was fun because you relied on listeners more in text to have yeah. your banter and, like, the comedy. I think on Capital, I feel so lucky that I'm, like, on air every morning with two best friends. They're yeah. like my brothers. We're in a very comfortable stage where we can all... You can bounce off of each other as well. Yeah, and take the mick out of each other. Yeah. I don't know if I swear <laughs> on this, so I'll just say, take the mick out of each other. Um, but yeah, definitely we, can't. No, okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a joy because we're coming in, we're laughing every day and if someone's it's not all on you to come up with every concept every idea mm. sometimes you might find something funny and the other two make it funnier yeah. so you're all taking each other's ideas and sort of really making them into something bigger and better every time or you find something funny then they don't find it funny then they'll laugh at you for finding it funny yeah all exactly that. <laughs> whether you have to you have to take it in turns to be the butt of the joke some days it's me other days i'm laughing at them and, yeah. and we all take it in turns to be that person Mm. And that's like a lovely friendship. I think in every friendship group, you someone's the butt of the joke one yeah. day, aren't they? Yeah. And you're all <laughs> laughing at them. It, and and it's nice when it you know the shoes on the other foot, and it's your turn for revenge. Today it was um, Jimmy with his shorts. Yeah, poor producer <laughs> Jimmy. I mean, he had it because he wore little like flowery shorts, and then he made fun of my hair. He, I said to him, I was like, whoa, you went savage. Too far. I just walked in. Come on. Yeah, he, he literally went full drag queen mode almost and started literally. like trying to roast you. So true. But I've got to ask, are you excited to present your first ever Summertime Bull? Oh, I am so, I am excited. I'm so nervous. nervous. I think it's one of those things where because I've got Roman and Sonny with me, I'm not scared about presenting it as much because I know they'll bail me out and help me. I know they'll never leave me stranded mm -hmm. if I forget what I'm saying. It's just... You've seen the best people do it from Madonna and her cape getting stuck on the stairs. <laughs> you know, all these, there's been a load of celebs over the years that have fallen over on a big stage. And that is my biggest fear. It's that falling over, flashing some You're not going to fall over. I hope not. And if you do, I'm going to be in the golden circle, right? <gasps> Would you I'll catch be there. me? I will catch you. Don't worry. If I stage dive, will you catch me? <laughs> I will catch you. I'll okay. make sure I'm right at the front. Just be like, oh, Gemma, where are you at? And Please. Then you'll, you'll spot me because of my hair. It's fine. Yeah, good. Yeah. This is the thing. I love the pink hair, if by you're nervous, the way. I'm a fan. Just look at me. I'll be like, it's fine. I've, <laughs> I've got you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank no, I you. Love it. I don't know what colour to go next, though. Blue. I'm stressing. I've done blue. Capital colours. Oh, you've done blue. And I work at Thought Park and the colours are blue. So I would just match and it would look a bit odd. So you've done pink. What about a, a, um, like a pastel purple? I've done purple, but I am going to go purple. Okay, we'll discuss this afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> this is probably not part of the... <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I don't know what colour to do. But anyways, um, is there any advice that you would give to somebody just starting out in the radio industry that wants to get to the point that you're at today? I just think, don't... Um, I think we live in a world now where you see the end product very quick. So, um, you know, you're seeing Instagram, you're seeing people go overnight yeah. famous, right? Yes. And most people's story, even if they're a singer, if they're a... I mean, a, a recent example was like the Eurovision guy, right? He, mm. um, he, Sam Ryder. Sam Ryder. Him, yeah. Yeah, he comes the second... The Eurovision guy. The Eurovision guy. <laughs> I thought it'd be easier to explain him like that, but Sam Ryder. So his example is you're seeing overnight fame, mm. but when, when we had him in to interview, found out he'd been doing pubs, clubs, weddings for eight years. Oh, my god! So he would have looked to some people like me, you know, give it a give up the day job, get a proper <laughs> job, and he's stuck by it and he's made it to where wow. he wants to be. And you know, he's a few thousand uh sales off being number one, like really? oh my in the charts. So I would say don't compare yourself to anyone else, even in your friendship group. Maybe they're doing a similar job and they seem to have catapulted you and they're doing something better and bigger. Yeah. Your time will come. Everyone's timeline's different. I mean, it's taken me years. I've been doing this since I left school. And uh, like it, it, 
I'm finally in what I would call my dream job. But wow, I've done some other jobs yeah. over the years. If you work hard enough, put your mind to it. You're going to get there. You will eventually get there. You've got to back yourself. If you know that you, you enjoy it and you're good at it, back yourself. And yet yeah, you'll do some weird jobs along the way and you might think, oh, this isn't as good. Why aren't I on capital yet? Do the other stuff first. Get yeah. good. Make your mistakes. You have to work your way up. Yeah. Make mistakes along the way so that by the time you're on the big platform, you're ready. And now you're right at the top, aren't you? Well, let's so see. Great. Fingers crossed. Queen of capital, as I said. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so, okay. My video is targeted towards more females because the radio industry up until now has been typically quite male-dominated. As a woman who co-presents with two men, how do you set yourself apart from them? And what advice would you give to young women starting off in the industry? I think um, my way of always viewing anything like this is just wanting to feel equal, not even sort of setting myself apart. I just want to feel equal. So if I'm with the boys, I'm one of the lads. If I'm with the girls, I'm one of the girls, right? And I think that's the best compliment you can almost get is that if, if if a lad is talking to you like one of his lad mates... That's great. That's where you're at, isn't it? You, you feel equal. Yeah. So I think it's not about trying to do one over on lads. I don't think mm. it's about going too extreme. I think it's about being you, being mm. authentic, being um, brave enough to say your opinion and, and say if you don't agree with something, but in general... The, my goal has always just be uh, to be seen as an equal. And yeah, I, think, I love that. Yeah, that's all you can ask for, really. Yeah, that's great. And do you think that the next generation will experience a more balanced media industry with regards to gender? Yeah, I think so, because I think it's getting there in so it's many ways, there. gender, sexuality, everything. Yeah. I think um, everyone's becoming more accepting and more open and braver and mm. taking more risks. Um, I think it's getting there. And I think, uh, you know, if you are a girl listening, it's more, again, it goes back to backing yourself and knowing you're as good as the lads, you're as good as anyone. So true. Yeah, and we need, we do need more girls and we need girls supporting girls and we need guys supporting girls. You know, we need that... We need that lovely moment where we're all, it doesn't matter what gender you are or yeah. what sexuality you are or anything. We're just seen as a presenter. And if, you get, if you're good enough, you get the job. It shouldn't matter. Yeah. I love that. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much for joining me and for taking your time out. It's been amazing. I've loved it. Thank you, Sean. You're so welcome and you're absolutely brilliant. Like thank you. you. Are, you're natural at what you're doing <laughs> and, you know, you've definitely got a career in this job, 100%. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you at the Summertime Ball. Yeah. Can be cheering you on. <laughs> Bribery. Summertime Ball <laughs> tickets. <laughs>